Good evening. Welcome to this segment of Society Pages. We have with us a very, very special young man as our guest this evening, the Minister R.G. Moore III. Welcome, Reverend Moore. Thank you. I, I call you Reverend Moore on show, but at home, sometimes when he comes over to visit my son, he gives me a kiss and it's R.G. Right, so right. <laughs> I have to get used to calling you that when we're out. Um, how long have you been a minister? I've been a licensed minister now for four and a half years, and in December it'll be five years. Is that right? Yes, when you yes. said licensed mi minister, mm -hmm. what is the difference? Uh, what is a licensed minister uh, or um, ordained minister, or what is the difference between? The difference between the uh, two, uh, being licensed, you are acknowledged by the church as uh, having been called. And after a period of study or a period of exercising uh, the ability to preach, uh, when you have completed uh, some educational courses, a church uh, ordains you afterwards. Well, uh, when you said you had to be taught or practice or study, mm -hmm. who would you study under and where would you be studying? Uh, well, b being in a church and having been licensed by that church, uh, the pastor usually, or uh, someone he has appointed, uh, teaches a ministerial class on ministerial ethics and uh, pulpit etiquette. What church is that that uh, you were licensed under? I was licensed uh, by my grandfather in Chicago, Reverend R.G. Moore Sr., and uh, I studied under him for about a year, and then I moved back out here to California. Uh, my grandfather passed in Chicago, and I moved back out here to California and was under the tutelage of my godfather, Reverend Floyd J. Purdy who now pastors the Faith Missionary Baptist Church of Christ in East Palo Alto. And uh, after being under him for about two years, I uh, went to my present church membership, Bethany Baptist Church in Oakland. Dr. M.J. Williams is my pastor. What is an ordained minister? Well, an ordained minister is one who has been, again, acknowledged by uh, not only his church, but it could also be by his uh, district, uh, his state convention, which that church is a part of, or a national convention, a national body of thousands of ministers who recognize and acknowledge this fact. Uh, there are differences in ordain, ordaining and licensing. Uh, when you're ordained, you're able to perform marriages, uh, funeral rites, and other uh, pastoral ministerial duties. But they call you reverend. Is, uh, is that a um, title that is indicative of a licensed minister, or do you just, are, are you called ministers, or? Well, through our, uh, particularly in the uh, black church, it uh, is a title of respect uh, to someone who uh, is a person of the cloth, someone who has dedicated their life to preaching God's word, and so it is a, uh, a title of respect. I don't particularly like to go by a reverend, I just go by my first name, but if I'm ever given a title, I'd prefer to be called Minister Moore rather than uh, Reverend Moore, and then after I am officially ordained, uh, maybe uh, if uh, I would feel better about being called uh, Reverend Moore. When did you start, how long, when did you start, um, how old were you when you started? I was ministry? 11 years old when I started preaching, I was 11. In Chicago? In Chicago. That's my home, you know. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. That's my father's home, too. So uh, when you started, um, I, this is probably a very difficult question to answer or one that may not sound quite uh, sophisticated to ask, but what, how, what made you start preaching? Well, uh, I accepted Christ at the age of nine, and um, when I had accepted Christ into my life, I knew that being a bench member was not enough for me. There was something within me that I just had a desire to speak about the Bible. Um, I was, uh, had a special relationship with the young people in my grandfather's church, and um, they, would all, they had always said I would be a preacher because I talked so well. I've always been a talker, it runs in the family through my father and my grandfather. <clears throat> so um, after accepting Christ, and coming back out to California um, about a year later and being in the church, um, I decided I wanted to go back to Chicago. Um, there was something in Chicago, I guess, that uh, drew me back there. And uh, I went back when I was 11. And um, then and there, in a revival, um, I was called to preach. I uh, had a personal 
uh, encounter with the Holy Spirit um, through much prayer and meditation and reading other examples of how the Holy Spirit worked with people in the Bible, how the Holy Spirit called those people to preach. I said, God, I know there's something in my life that you want me to do. I'm young, I don't know what I want to do, you know, being 11 years old. And I said, uh, I'm trusting in you. And so I said, I know and I believe that you want me to preach. If you do, fill me with your Holy Spirit. And right then and there in that revival service, uh, the Holy Spirit came upon me and called me to preach the gospel. How does that affect your uh, family? Did, how did they, did they support you? I suppose they did because you were saying there were ministers in the family. Mm -hmm. Uh, how does that affect your relationship with your family, you being a very young minister? Well, my father, who until recently uh, accepted his calling into the ministry, at first was uh, concerned. He was against it all the way. Um, my mother, um, she was supportive of me, but she was saying, uh, is this something you want to do or is this something that you're being pushed into? Um, but when they had seen that it was something that uh, for my birth, I was always wanting to do, basically. I'd always shown signs of uh, doing something they had to do with the church. Um, they accepted it, I believe. And um, my brother, and particularly I do have a brother, and um, it affects him in a different way, um, being young out on the street and with people. Um, he has acknowledged it and is very supportive of me. And so um, after uh, showing some uh, seriousness and some dedication to my work, my family, as uh, most families do, have uh, come in behind me and been a strong foundation for me. You know, Ed, being a minister and being your age, you've had an opportunity to make a lot of appearances um, in television, radio, uh, I guess even uh, guest invitations uh, to do banquets and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And I understand you did, you, uh, did the NBC Nightly News just recently, okay. which I got a chance to watch, of course. And I want to show some of that. Is that mm, okay? Great, great. We, we are going to um, be watching, what is that? The Tell us what this is, the NBC Nightly News for? Uh, nation, national. National. Mm -hmm. okay. National News. Too many, my brothers and sisters, yes, too, too many of our children are growing up on the dark side of life. Amen. He speaks, and the congregation responds. He is young, but some say that Reedy Moore already has the gift. I, 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 I know you know what I'm talking about this morning. I am always in amazing shock because God can use someone like me. I'm just an average 15 year old boy. Reedy Moore has been preaching for four years, but his audience has seemed more surprised by his confident message than by his age. We ought to add to the knowledge of the qualities of our minds. Oh, and we find that knowledge in the light Christ Jesus. Reedy Moore is not the only young person who says he has been called to the pulpit. In Oakland, California, there are at least 25. 11-year-old William Carey is the youngest. Little William has been preaching in Baptist churches since he was nine. Because of alcohol and drugs, a lot of young people are not able to think right. Lord, have mercy. Isn't it nice to be with Jesus? Isn't it nice? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. The power of church in black America has always been especially strong in part because of its emotional, positive presence. Early on, children experienced strong spiritual leaders, making the call to preach appealing. A lot of them see the glamour, but fail to understand the commitment involved. It's not difficult to, to be a minister within the church. All you have to do is say that you've been called to preach. What they need is an overdose of the Holy Ghost. One night I was sleeping and my bed shook and I heard something say, William, I want you to bring the message. I want you to preach for me. William Carey writes many of his own sermons. He gets support from his mother, Alois, who has opened their house to the sick and homeless. The Bible says a child shall leave them. So I believe that a child can really be an effect to a nation, 
a country, a neighborhood, and especially someone who wants to do something good. And help them to get well. And Jesus precious name, you pray, man. The Oakland area, where many of these young preachers come from, is in crisis. Unemployment is high, especially among black teenagers. Some have turned to dealing drugs as a way of surviving. But some, like 18-year-old preacher Charles Parker, have chosen religion instead. My motivation was being seriously afraid of getting killed or being in jail one day. Let's wake up today, young people. Let's stop singing about erotic city and start singing about the heavenly city. Charles, a former gang member, says he now uses his toughness as a positive force. When I play football, I'm on the field to make a tackle to get my, my team to win, and that's what I'm doing. I'm up there to get a touchdown for Jesus, a victory over Satan. If you're saved today, sit on your feet and say, yeah! Say, yeah! It is quite extraordinary to have a child in the pulpit. Writer James Baldwin, in some of his essays and books, has written about his experiences as a teenage preacher in Harlem in the 40s. That child has that value of making you look again at something you thought you knew. Making you see again something you thought you saw. That's what love is about. To make you look again. To make the world new again. Give us strength, give us courage, give us love for one another. Make Some us young preachers like Reedy Moore do seem to touch the lives of their friends and others around them. But these kids live out dual roles. They are children at play. But they are also youngsters with spiritual dimensions that make them stand out. I, I, I am the Alpha and Omega. My name is Jesus. I died for you. My name is Jesus. I died. I died for you. It's a wonderful tape. I'm glad you brought it for us well, to, to share it with us. I enjoyed doing that. Uh, it, you know, when he mentioned something about criticism uh, for being a child minister. Do you find that that is, uh, you get that very frequently? Fortunately, I've been blessed by God not to face a lot of opposition. Uh, there will always be uh, the older minister who uh, is threatened by uh, someone younger than him, thinking that they're going to come in and try to take his place. But um, I have faith in God that he's going to bring me through, that uh, he's not going to open a door uh, where uh, there's somebody waiting on the side, uh, say I'm a sheep, and on the other side there's a wolf. I don't believe God's going to lead me uh, through a door like that. And if there was, he'd uh, uh, give me the proper uh, armor to deal with and defend myself mm -hmm. but um, fortunately I've been blessed not to have to face so much opposition what about your social life is that um, does has that changed since you became a minister or since you have been uh, publicly um, have ma making the um, appearances and and getting uh, so famous because of the fact that you being very young and very rare that ministers are that young do you find that very difficult with your social life at school or things no, like that? No, as a matter of fact, my social life has uh, turned for the better. I get more invitations to uh, be in a lot of uh, public activities. But then again, within my own, uh, my own inner circle, my friends, um, it brings us closer. Uh, something about religion and a spirituality uh, does something to people. And uh, when they see that you're trying to be better, when you're trying to be exa an example, it uh, draws people to you. Uh, and maybe that's not always true, but in my case, that has happened. Um, I continue to go to school dances and show people that uh, being a Christian, being born again, is not about living a life of uh, complete insecurity, always screaming hallelujah, praise the Lord all the time. Uh, God wants you to be satisfied and uh, live the best life you can possibly live, but he only wants you to do it according to his scriptures. Accept his son, Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. Uh, you're not going to be perfect. You're going to make mistakes. But God says that uh, when you fall, I'll be there to pick you up. Uh, just continue to have faith in me and, and uh, when you have accepted Christ you don't have a desire to do those things that you would normally do uh, if you had not accepted Christ. So uh, back to my social life, my social life has changed for the better, I'm happier, um, I'm a, I believe I'm a better young man, a better young person and a better Christian and child of God and a better minister. 
That is fabulous. I can I can t testify to the fact that you are a beautiful young man. I I see you socially, and you're just a beautiful young man. Anytime I see you, I always get my kiss when you come in. I, I really like that. Right. When we come back, we're going to have a, a cl clipping of you with uh, Donahue. That's going to be fabulous. We'll be right back. Reach ring, O ring. Check. Locking pins. Check. Check his hardest. How long do I have to work on the valve? 20 minutes. Air supply system check. Check. Hold the blowdown. Check. Not return down back in check. Get my bank pressure. Get it. Sam Knight is a repairman, but when he goes to work, it's a hundred feet underwater. He's a Navy diver. Some of the best people in their fields are working in the Navy. They're men and women who could put their skills and training to work anywhere, but believe being the best means more when it's done for their country. Okay, it's all set. Navy know-how, it's working for America. Welcome back to Society Pages. We're here with Minister R.G. Moore, the third. Okay. <laughs> what other appearances have you uh, made television-wise other than the nightly news? I think you did TGI4 or something? Yes, I did. Uh, God has blessed this ministry um, to go nationwide, as a matter of fact, and I give all praise and credit to him for that. I've um, been on a local stations here of uh, CBS, ABC, and NBC. I was on um, CBS's production of uh, Hot Streak. I was on uh, KGO's production of the Channel 7 Evening News. And I was on uh, Channel 4's uh, TGI for an afternoon program. And uh, I was able to work with some very kind and courteous people. And uh, nationally, I've uh, done the NBC Nightly News. And I've uh, done uh, the uh, Donahue Show. And um, I've gotten some calls to do some uh, articles. and. Uh, just give a testimony of how Christ has come into my life at a young age and has changed my life and now how what keeps me going to uh, want to motivate someone else, uh, a young person, to run on for Jesus Christ. Do you get an opportunity to work with very many other young um, aspiring ministers? Well, I know quite a few. I've uh, not become real, real chummy with uh, a lot of them because I'm always on the go. But um, one of the plans that I would like to see develop in the future is a joint fellowship of all of us coming together. Since we're out there uh, to, uh, for the same reason, and that's uh, telling the message of Jesus Christ, how good he is and how he's come into our lives and does something for us and how he can do the same thing for you, I'm hoping that we can get a fellowship of one another to just sit down and know each other. It's good to know and to be able to work together. Um, not only that, but um, I work with a lot of young people. I've uh, been guest revivalist for several of the uh, Bay Area's um, Young uh, People's Revival. And uh, coming up in October, uh, God has seen fit to bless my ministry to do the uh, Colorado statewide youth revival in uh, October. And that's going to uh, reach between seven and 10,000 young people. And so uh, I do solicit your prayers and all of the, your audience's prayers also. Well, you have mine, uh, right. definitely. Um, tell us, you went to, uh, I, we said we were going to have a clip of uh, Donahue's show. Okay. Tell us about, for, before we go to the clip, tell us a little bit about Mr. Donahue himself. <laughs> uh, Mr. Donahue is a very kind, considerate man. Uh, he never takes sides. Um, one minute uh, you'll see that uh, He's saying something in support of you, and the next minute he's saying something in support of his audience or uh, in support of the uh, opposer of what you're doing. Um, the show was fantastic. I got to meet a lot of beautiful people. Um, unfortunately, though, um, there, were, um, there was a man on the show who, uh, if you see certain parts, you may not be able to see the whole clipping, but um, for those who saw the show before this taping, um, you might have seen me get out of my seat and move around a little bit. I was not um, real angry. I was a little disturbed because um, the ministry is not something to play with. Um, God in no means is a plaything. 
I believe that any man who can split the Red Sea in half to bring his children across uh, has the power to wipe you out with a snap of his fingers. So um, uh, there was a man on the show, uh, Mr. Marjo Gortner, who many of you uh, may recall. If you're my age, I don't think you would remember him. But uh, the older generation might remember. Um, he was a young preacher at um, one time. And um, Marjo was not called uh, by God. Marjo was called by his parents. And, uh, and I say to each and every one of you, and you too, Mrs. Dorn, that um, when you stand before God, I pray that you will be very humble and very serious because uh, religion, spirituality, uh, God is not a plaything. But um, Donahue's show was very interesting. I was asked a lot of uh, interesting questions. Um, how did I get into the ministry? What keeps me going? Why I keep running on? And I got to sign a few autographs also. So it was uh, real different. I want to hear more about that. We're going to go into one of the clips, for, uh, the clip for the Donahue show right now. Okay. We're as a Unitarian, I feel the same way as Marjo does about the exploitation of religion, and I and I don't, so and I'm not comfortable with the idea that because I haven't accepted Jesus, that I am not a good person. I feel that I'm a good person, and I want and I'd like to, your comments on that. Being a firm believer in what the Bible says, the Bible says that you are a sinner. The Bible says all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. This the woman is a very nice lady, though. I mean, I'm not denying that, but the Bible says... You're saying that says, she's a sinner? I am not. You don't know her. You don't know her. How can you call well, her a sinner? Well, I go by what the Bible says. That. Being a firm believer in the Bible, the Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I believe what the Bible says. I believe that the Bible is the inspired word of God. What about faith so grace? until you accept that and realize you are a sinner, you... I am not a sinner. You're not a sinner. No, I would like to and, say and that he certainly has. Are Jews, are Jews sinners because they don't believe in, God, in nope. uh, Jesus? Nobody has the right to judge that but God. I don't uh, feel that anybody but God has the right to judge who is a sinner and who is not a sinner. I do believe, though, that what he is saying is that this is his belief and his own personal belief that he is a sinner. Now, you may or may not have to accept what he is saying, but this is his belief and his opinion. He has his right to yours. You have your right to I yours. I would say the one thing about organized religion, the one thing about organized religion that I have become anti is this telling people that they're sinner and they're evil unless they're washed in the blood, unless you do that. That's, you know, I have a question directed at the first three. Yeah. Religion today has come to me not only the word of God, but how to deal in everyday situations, ethically and morally. And how can you, with your age, and little experience. Jesus was 12. Yes. Was he not 12 when the marriage feast? Yes, he was. But the world has become much more complex than back then. Well, and I think that situations have changed. And without your age backing you up, how can you feel, how can you preach? Well, I would like to say something to that myself uh, briefly. People have always told me that I was too young to preach, but I've always said it's not what you know, it's who you know. I feel that my knowledge is of God. And I, and I believe that I'm qualified to preach. Yes, ma'am. I'm wondering about your experiences and how much time you actually spend preaching and how much time you spend doing what we consider the normal childhood thing. A lot of my time is spent going to movies, going to dances. Are you enrolled in a school? Yes, I am. Uh, a perm you're not on the road then? No, I'm not. How about you, uh, Reverend Carey? Do you have any idea how I feel referring to you as Reverend Carey? But I... <laughs> But I respect uh, what obviously your parents uh, sincerely believe you to be, and that is a minister of God. Fantastic. You know, um, he mentioned, were you enrolled in school? Are you enrolled in a local school here? Yes, I do. I go to the greatest school in the county, as a matter of fact, Independence High School. In San Jose. In San Jose. You know, the, um, where would you like your ministry to go? Um, what types of things do you want to do within the ministry? Well, I hope I never have to go up against a, uh, another Donahue audience in uh, that sense. Um, I would like um, my ministry, the ministry God has given me, um, to be able to do like Jesus ministries was. Um, Jesus ministry was a mass ministry where it reached hundreds of thousands, but at the same time when Jesus talked, you felt like he was talking to you. Um, as you saw on the Donahue show when I was in that little argument with um, the Unitarian lady, um, 
I don't preach me, and I, uh, I defy Michael Lord on what he said when he said this is what I feel. I don't preach what I feel because it doesn't matter what I feel. Uh, what I feel is not going to uh, send you to heaven nor to hell. Um, but what the Bible says, I am a firm and strong believer in the Bible as the true word of God. And I believe that the Bible uh, are instructions given by God to us on how we should live our lives. Um, I would like to see this ministry go into a pathway that God has not yet revealed to me. But I hope 20 years from now, uh, when someone who videotapes this, if they do, when they look back and see this videotape 20 years from now, I am doing something uh, that is uh, greater than what I'm doing now, uh, preaching God's gospel, uh, trying to help lead the lost and bring them back to Jesus Christ. You know, uh, I have to tell them this, but uh, when I opened my business, you did the um, blessing for my business, and I must say that it has very, done very, very well. And I know a lot of ministers like reports on <laughs> on uh, their works, mm -hmm. and you, I can just, I'm going to report that it has worked. I'm doing very well on that. But I want to ask you just one final thing. Mm -hmm. What would you like to say to uh, other aspiring young ministers? Well, I would like to say to um, anyone who is considering going into the ministry, um, the ministry is not anything to go into if you're looking to make money. Um, the ministry is a life of sacrifice. But then again, no one said that a minister has to drive a pinto. Uh, the minister has certain needs. And uh, I would say to that young minister, to get close to an older minister, a seasoned minister, as we say in the church, uh, someone who has gone the path, the road, where you're about to go, and stay humble. Always wear humility on your coattails and uh, stay in the Word. Stay in the Word of God and keep praying and studying and meditating. And if God has really called you, no matter what you may come up against, God will see you through. That is wonderful. You are just one of the most articulate, outstanding young men I've met. And I'm glad that you came to be with us this evening. Thank you for having me. And today. I've enjoyed it. I, we will see you again next week on Society Pages. Thank you. Thank you.